So this is the self-hosted uh, Imply uh, on-prem manager. Um, currently, this version of the software um, supports uh, basically Docker container deployment uh, for your Druid cluster. So each each node in the cluster um, will essentially be a separate uh, container. Um, so you can think of one container possibly being your, your master server, um, another container being your broker, and then you can deploy a number of uh, other containers, basically agent containers that uh, will contain your uh, your data servers. Basically, this this um, basic setup that I have here is a single single instance. So you you'll see in the overview section here um, that it's it's running. So the status is okay. The state is running. I haven't used any capacity on this cluster yet. So you see zero capacity used, and I have basically. It says three servers. Um, so this basically, uh, this cluster is one Docker container, but it's running all processes that represent the data, the query, and the master node. So if I were to, to go into this particular Docker container and look at the processes running, they would represent everything I would need to, to kind of build a cluster basically. But in a production cluster, most likely what you would have is, you know, multiple masters, multiple query, and then you know, a larger number of data nodes to, to support, you know, ingest and, and uh, querying of your data set. So um, also in this overview section, you can stop or uh, terminate the cluster. So if I want to just stop it temporarily, maybe I had some something to do uh, on the containers or whatever, I could say stop then restart it and it'll go off and restart all the processes. That stop and start functionality is not Docker stop and start. That's actually just stopping and starting the imply processes on whatever nodes I have in my cluster. So if you terminate it, it's terminating basically the software that's running uh, on those Docker containers. It's not actually terminating the Docker containers. So just uh, to keep Keep that in mind. Um, in this in this uh, screen, you'll also see you know what version of software is running, uh, the name of the cluster. In my case, it's called on prem, and then the name of of uh, or the, or each how many quantity of each of the servers that I have, along with you know what IP addresses uh, those represent. So if I go into the setup um, section of the screen. From a deployment perspective, uh, this piece of the, the product is very helpful. Um, you can choose the, the version you want to run in the cluster, for instance. So you'll see here I have two versions. In the past, um, I had downloaded 298. 2916 is the, the most recent, so I upgraded to that. And that's a big piece of, of this um, on-prem manager or self-hosted manager is you know, giving you the ability to, to upgrade the cluster, right? Because without this management piece, you, it's kind of a manual process to go to each node, you get a copy of the software over, you know, et cetera. And it also, along with the configuration, you'll see the configuration pieces down here, the common runtime properties, um, which is deployed on every node type, you know, you would have to basically go into each system modify that file um, in on a larger cluster that that becomes very cumbersome so being able to just configure uh, those things here in a central area and then select apply after you've made the changes the imply manager container will go out and upgrade each host container with the right software and it'll also you know redefine any configurations um, that I've put in here as well You'll see some other information in here, such as the the metadata store. Um, you do start a separate container for this. So you start a separate container for both the metadata store as well as the zookeeper. Um, so there is some information that kind of defines, you know, the, the MySQL user and, and password, the port that it's running on, you know, things like that. 
Um, you could put in your own ZooKeeper cluster here if you wanted to, but by default that runs on your master, master servers. Um, you also know this is a deep storage configuration, so you can actually set where you're persisting your, your data to um, in here as well. As I scroll down, you know, some additional, you know, JVM configs for each of the nodes uh, and the, the runtime properties. When I go into my advanced config, um, this is where I can define, you know, additional extensions that I want to use. So very similar to Implied Cloud, I can come in here and say, okay, in addition to, you know, the default Druid extensions, which load all the jar files for, for each of the, um, you know, the, the add-in extensions that you may want to use. So, for instance, if I wanted to, to um, ingest ORC files, you know, I would, I would choose the Druid ORC extension. Or if I wanted to ingest Avro, you know, I would choose the Avro extension and so on, right? And that will update my uh, common runtime properties with the extension and make those jars av uh, available so that uh, I can then... Um, you know, ingest the, the necessary files, for instance. Um, you can also, uh, there's a, uh, some experimental features that can be enabled within the self-hosted cluster as well. So those are available here. Then there's some other customizations that you can do as well at the very bottom. Um, when I go into, uh, and, and I should mention too that, <clears throat> you know, after you make a change, so let's say I chose a different version here and then select apply changes, you know, that's going to essentially go out and upgrade my cluster, right, with, with, with that, whatever changes I've made in this particular screen. Um, if I go to servers, this screen's important. It, it's telling me what's currently running. So as I mentioned, I'm running one Docker container. It's got all of the processes I need to run a cluster. But if I start another agent container, the agent container is going to include the processes that I, I choose, right, for whatever server. So if I selected add server here, um, and I can actually, let me do this, hold on one second. So I just started another, um, I just started another agent container. Yeah, let me reshare here. So I just started out my command line, I just added another agent container. Now you'll notice when I say add server now, um, I have another server available because I added another agent container. So you, you would just basically continue adding agent containers as you want to build out the cluster. And this could be done through Kubernetes. So Kubernetes could deploy the Docker container and then you come in and, and pick and choose, you know, what containers you want to make whatever node types with Druid. So for instance, if I wanted to add another um, uh, data server uh, to my cluster, I would just choose the server and then the role type, which would be data tier. And then I would say, okay, and that would go out and deploy um, another uh, container. Or if I wanted to deploy another master server or another query, you know, I could do that. So I would just say, okay, there. Um, and if I select apply changes, it's going to then go out, add this node into my cluster, right? So that's another great benefit of using either of the managers, either Imply Cloud or the self-hosted, is that currently, you know, if you're going to go deploy another Druid node, if it's bare metal, you need to deploy a whole other piece of hardware. Um, if it's Amazon, you have to go out, unless you're using the Imply Cloud, you have to go out manually, kind of add an instance, add it to the cluster, which means copying around configs, you know, things like that. But here it makes it very easy for you, right? I can just keep adding servers, hit apply, and now my cluster is scaled up, um, you know, which is one of the great benefits of Druid, the horizontal scalability, right? You can keep scaling it as you need to, to add capacity in the cluster, whether it be for better query performance, better ingest performance, more retention, you know, whatever it is, um, you can continue adding your, your different nodes, or, or maybe you just want additional redundancy, right? Um, you could add in additional nodes here. Um, then you have a, a lookup option. So the lookups give you a, a secondary uh, table or key value store basically where you can map um, a key uh, from your primary table into the secondary lookup table to extract a value. 
Um, so as a, a, you know, a good example would be, um, you know, with networking, for instance, I might have an IP address, but, you know, for an engineer to know what that IP is, you really need a host name, something that's more descriptive. So the key in that case would be the IP and the value would be the host name. So I could create a secondary lookup table um, so that at, at query time, when I'm in pivot, I could say, you know, what's the host name of all of these values? And it could just go right into that lookup table and extract the host names and give those to me in a, a display versus giving me the IP addresses. So it's a nice way to kind of map those uh, key value pairs. Uh, that secondary lookup table is great where, um, where you need to update things a lot. You know, so if I'm updating host names for my IPs, which happens quite a bit, I might want to do that in a secondary table where I can just keep updating that table as need be. This can be done other ways, but that's kind of a nice feature with Druid is uh, using this secondary um, table. So you can just define your lookups. You would just copy in uh, the extractor and JSON, and there's some examples of this, you know, in a blog that I did, but then also in a Druid uh, Druid documentation, they explain the lookup function. So you would just copy in this extractor factory JSON and then hit OK. And this would also define where the, the key value uh, store is located and, you know, kind of the layout. What is the key? What is the value? You know, things like that. Yeah, this gives you, um, as you can see, it just gives you the, the different ports things are running at. The, the big thing here would be like the JDBC connection string. So if you had um, like Tableau and you wanted to connect Tableau, you could just use this connection string. Um, and then within the Tableau, you would also need the, the API, you know, username and password in or, order to access the, um, uh, the, the API for the Druid database basically. And that's pretty much what the self-hosted manager looks like today.